thank you, Chair, and uh, let me also thank uh, Joachim and all the organizers for bringing this very interesting group together. It's my first time I speak in this uh, room, and it's always been very exciting events, and including uh, this one. Um, I prepared a flashy presentation, but since the light will be dimmed and it's late in the afternoon, I'll skip that part so to, you all can stay awake. Um, I would like to, before I start with uh, making five key points, um, also I'd like to share the reflection on, on what's in the title of this session, uh, Systemic and Market-Based Approaches, uh, which sound very good, um, but I think it's important to reflect upon that they don't necessarily uh, go easily together in symbiosis, since market actors uh, typically don't care about systemic issues, since the issue we're talking about, um, which is food loss and waste, if it's in very significant, is an expression of market failure. So the question is, and that's where the solutions may become complex, and it will be uh, part of my uh, conclusions, um, is that there may be very simple solutions to reducing food loss, but getting them to work, that's where it becomes complex. So that's uh, important to bear in mind, although I do agree that we need uh, both, um, but um, it's important to go to the details. So as I said, I'll have five uh, key points <clears throat> to make. The first um, um, is reiterating a point that has already been made uh, time and time and again, but I cannot underline. It's important, but also there are some refinements uh, to make. First is on the metrics. So we need to have more refined uh, metrics from our own research on uh, food losses. So basically the focus of our work is on food losses uh, in the first stages of the, uh, of the value chain. Um, <clears throat> the findings we, we find is that uh, food losses uh, can be very substantial uh, where we've done uh, analysis across the value chain from the farm level to uh, middleman, logistics, transporters, onto processors um, and wholesale, uh, excluding retail. But it can vary between 6 and 26 percent, um, meaning it's very heterogeneous uh, both across contexts and across types of uh, production which means there's a lot of uh, the things and solutions we can come up with also have to be context specific. The second uh, finding from this metrics, uh, because it includes not just the quantities lost, but it's also measurement of the quality lost. And what we find is the more substantial part are in the quality losses. So if we just look at quantities lost, we may miss the point in uh, most cases. Uh, third finding from that is that the um, most of the losses occur at the farm level, uh, about 60 to 80 percent in the cases we've studied. So again, I won't generalize, but across major staple crops uh, in, uh, in nine or ten countries where we've done this, uh, that's what we, we find. Um, and lastly, uh, uh, since we take account of uh, quality loss, it means that food loss doesn't mean the food is not used. It may be damaged, it may be used for animal feed, so it doesn't necessarily represent a full economic loss to farmers or to other food chain actors. Or it may also, and then it will still be uh, labeled as food loss according to FEO's de uh, definition, um, it may also mean that uh, damaged food uh, enters into human consumption and that it may be uh, uh, damaging to uh, human uh, health, uh, like aflatoxin in, um, in maize or uh, damaged milk, uh, spoiled milk, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, I could say more about it, but uh, clearly the agenda there is we need specific uh, measurement across the value chain that takes account of quantity and quality losses uh, if we want to find uh, uh, useful solutions. Second finding, uh, it also relates to the, um, or the second point, relates to the, uh, to the metrics as in the surveys we do, we, we not just try to identify how much gets lost, uh, also why it gets lost. We ask the um, actors what are the reasons for losses. Um, they're the standard things that you would think about, uh, the poor handling on the field, pests and diseases, um, 
the poor infrastructure, like logistics and poor roads and so on, and, uh, and adverse uh, weather conditions. But most importantly, in most cases, it's economic conditions, like low prices that uh, make uh, or cause uh, pre-harvest losses, for instance, since the prices are too low even to harvest or because the labor cost of hiring workers uh, is too high. So economic reasons uh, are a critical factor in all these cases, but again, here we find the same thing is that the types of causes are common um, in all, all cases, but the degree to which they matter differ across the cases, again meaning that also the solutions need to be context specific. Third point um, is that there are simple solutions. We've done a range of impact assessments of specific interventions that might help to reduce food loss, so particularly um, addressing the food losses at, at the farm level. Uh, for instance, we've done impact assessments of new contractual arrangements with quality-based uh, contractual arrangements, be it through contract farming or through uh, quality certification in Guatemala beans or through the use of uh, hermetically sealed uh, storage uh, bags. Uh, in maize in Ethiopia and in other contexts. In all those cases, we find significant reductions in, um, in food losses, um, but not as significant and we've, as we have hoped for in the order of 10% of reduction. I'll come back to that, why that's the case. We also looked at uh, solar-powered cold storage uh, in the case of for fruits and vegetables, in the case of uh, Nigeria, a few other uh, contexts. Um, uh, where, because it's fruits and vegetables, where food losses tend to be much higher, get also more significant reductions because of the cold storage where it's introduced um, up to 30, 40 percent. Um, but again, uh, the impacts uh, may not be as much as they could be, should be, if we just take this uh, kind of intervention. Um, so that brings me to um, my first point is, uh, which is that these are simple, the, the ones I mentioned, simple and also uh, low cost, relatively low cost solutions. Um, but it's more complex to get them to work fully to their full impact. And that's where the systemic issues come in. Uh, first is there needs to be enough incentive for farmers to adopt these, um, uh, <coughs> these uh, new methods call them technologies, practices, and so on. For instance, quality certification only works if all the actors along the value chain accept that certification. If that's not the case, um, then the incentive may not go to the farmer. The farmer doesn't get the payoff. Um, the solution needs to be cost effective, which is basically the same point, but in some cases, uh, uh, the investment cost may be a bit more than marginal. That has, may have to do uh, with the cold chain development, where it's not the farmer necessarily has to do it, or has to do it with the groups of farmers, or where it has to be done uh, together uh, with uh, the intermediaries. Um, what needs to work across the value chains, a lot of these solutions, um, particularly when it comes to cold chain, doesn't necessarily work for one specific value chain, but can be effective for various products at the same time, onto actors that may handle a lot more produce than just this uh, single uh, crop. And lastly, on this point, um, is uh, one has to look at certain trade-offs. One is the trade-off, potential trade-off with some solutions with food safety. Uh, if there's pests and diseases, uh, one has to avoid that uh, solutions come to excessive use of pesticides or other things that are uh, not uh, congenial with food safety. Or the solutions that where, as we found, for instance, in the case of the cold chains in, in Nigeria, because it wasn't developed for the whole market, the cost of the, the, uh, the full cost of the inter interventions got translated into the market prices, uh, retail, and also for consumers. And in the end, a lot of consumers would not buy those products, even though knowing or being informed that it would be better quality, but they couldn't afford the higher price. So what it means, uh, we need to, uh, it needs to work across the value chain and even better across the whole uh, food uh, system. So that brings me to my last point, since I'm also running off my time, is um, that the uh, 
The entry point can well be that we want to address food loss and waste, but it can never be the sole focus of the interventions and the approaches that we take. Um, rather, it's, it's that food loss and waste reduction should be mainstreamed with interventions uh, that look at the, the broader uh, market uh, bottlenecks that encourage the full value chain uh, development and looks at broader food system um, improvements. And uh, like intervention, which I mentioned, uh, with quality certification or food standards uh, development, that if there's no system-wide or market-broad acceptance, they will not work. So that's where things need to be brought together. Um, and in summing up these five points, uh, maybe there's a few entry points to a research agenda that needs to be implemented uh, uh, in each uh, particular context, uh, but together with many actors at the same time, the kind of research agenda which uh, Joachim was uh, already uh, trying to encourage. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll may come back to that when we discuss that point uh, tomorrow. So thank you very much.